Hello and welcome. This is Minute with the Mayor. I'm Arlene Borenstein and we're here with our Mayor Dean Trantalis. So good to see you. Happy to be here. So let's start off with something that everyone is talking about around the city and the county, which is the new river crossing and the whole conversation about the tunnel or the bridge. We know you want the tunnel, but tell us why. So a while back, the community had been talking about doing a commuter rail service through the South Florida area between Miami and West Palm Beach. And it sounds like a great idea. Um, there's some thinking that more people will start to take the train and get off of I-95. So the challenge that that creates is that um, over the new, the new river here in Fort Lauderdale, there we have a train bridge, but at the same time we have an enormous marine industry upriver that's multi-billion dollars, oh, yeah. uh, employs thousands of people throughout the region, and uh, and we cannot in any way compromise that industry. Uh, just keep in mind, Fort Lauderdale is the as the yacht, yachting capital of the world. Right. The marine industry loves Fort Lauderdale, and we love the marine industry. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, there was some talk about building a bridge over the city of Fort Lauderdale, over, uh, over the river, and it turned out that when you looked at the bridge, it would be approximately a two-mile bridge cutting right through the middle of our redevelopment area. All this new construction, new, new homes are being built. Uh, it's just an unbelievable impact that it would have. So we felt that, um, you know, look, let's, let's talk about a tunnel option. Uh, you know, especially since the vehicular traffic going east-west is also going to be impacted by whatever we do with regard to this commuter rail service. So we, we got some ideas, we got some prices, uh, there's been a lot of uh, you know, juggling around as to you know, which prices it would cost. And I, and I think that um, right now we're at a point where we've actually brought the price down significantly and the opportunity is, is even more so. Uh, we're so happy to work with BDO. So the city commission voted uh, several weeks ago to support the tunnel idea and to uh, hire BDO to try to come up with a, a practical, feasible way in which the tunnel option would be the most available, most important way to get through the city of Fort Lauderdale. Just keep in mind that it would be great. We'd get rid of we'd get rid of that 100 trains a day that would be passing through the city. Uh, we understand now that Miami wants to bring its garbage from Miami to Georgia. Well, there'll be garbage trains coming through every day. I mean, it's just going to be a significant amount of impact through through an area that we have been spending decades trying to redevelop and reimagine, and it has become the height of our of of our uh uh, what we have seen since COVID, you know, right. all the new folks moving downtown, the young people, um, it would completely crush what we've been trying to do all of this time. Right. And, uh, um, and what would be the point of that? Is commuter rail that important to us that we're going to crush the, the excitement and the growth and all the opportunities that we've created over the last 10 years? No. And do you think that you and the county, you know, the city and the county can come together now that the price has gone down? Do you think it's more of a reality at this point? Well, it's up to them. Uh, we've already we've already uh, come up with um, many many options that make it feasible. Uh, every time we get a response from the county, it always seems like they're they're trying to find a way to to undermine this effort. Uh, at the same time, though, they still don't have prices for the bridge option. They don't know how much the bridge is going to cost. They don't even know the height of the bridge. They don't know the length of the bridge. They don't even know what the cost of, of buying up all the properties along the route is going to be. It could be anywhere between $300 million and a billion dollars. That has to be factored into the cost of the bridge. The wonderful thing about the tunnel option is mm -hmm. it can be built right under the tracks, and we don't have to take any property. All right. Well, we'll let's see, see what, what happens. happens. <laughs> All right, and so moving on to something monumental that we've achieved here in the city uh, is the water treatment plant. And we just broke ground on it not too long ago, last week. And um, it's, it, it is a huge improvement people will see in their drinking water in so well, many ways. This is something that we should have done at least 20 years ago. Uh, the Five Ash Water Treatment Plant uh, has long outlived its useful life. It's on the verge of calamitous failure, according to the, the words of a, a consultant that we hired several years ago. And, uh, and so now we're there. <clears throat> we did the groundbreaking. Uh, it's going to cost $660 million. Uh, it'll take 42 months mm -hmm. to, to complete. Uh, but we'll have clear water, we'll have abundant water, and we'll have safe water. What does that mean by safe water? It means that if we ever 
um, are impacted by a major storm, a Category 4, Category 5 hurricane, uh, the facility will not be inoperable. It will maintain itself, its integrity, resiliency. That's what Fort Lauderdale is all about, resiliency. Yeah. And these storms aren't getting any fewer or they're not getting any weaker. Right. They're only getting worse. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now we are we are really at risk if should a major storm come through the city of Fort Lauderdale and we cannot be without water. Right. And this does uh, withstand a up to a category five winds. Correct. Wow. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. Well, and it's going to be the example set for other municipalities around the country mm -hmm. uh, in terms of its uh, up-to-date technology, in terms of its resiliency, in terms of its capacity, and in terms of its design, mm -hmm. all of which is going to, we are, all the other cities around the country, as I go to, as I go to other um, conferences around the, around the country, uh, Fort Lauderdale is the example that others are using that they would like to follow. State-of-the-art technology, no more yellow tinge, which I have personally never really seen, but yeah. apparently that's a thing. So. Well, actually, the southern part of the city is serviced by the Peel Dixie plant, okay. and, they don't ha and they have a different filtration system, okay. so they don't have that problem. Makes sense. But they still have, you know, it's still not resilient to a Category 5 hurricane, right. so we have to be very careful about that, too. Absolutely. All right, well, that's it for today. Thank you so much, Mayor. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank we'll you. see you next time.